resetting France's ties with Africa has been a crucial part of Emmanuel Macron's foreign policy. But former colonies are the ones now deciding what ties they want with Paris. So how and why is France's relationship with Africa changing? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the programme. I'm Adrian Finnegan. Niger has seen rising anti-French sentiment since its military deposed the president and took power last Wednesday. In recent months, several countries in West Africa have moved to end their military ties with France, demanding that French troops leave the region. The former colonial power appears to be losing its influence in the Sahel. That's despite President Emmanuel Macron's election promise to reset ties with the continent. So, what's behind the shift? What role has Macron played and where do French-Africa relations go from here? We'll get to our guests in just a moment. But first, a report from Felix Nyawara. Long live Putin and down with France. Some of the chants echoed by thousands of coup supporters marching through the streets of Niger's capital, Niamey. The unrest follows France's suspension of all development and financial aid to Niger, prompting some protesters to storm the French embassy and setting fire to its entrance. Niger is resilient. We are resilient. If today the national budget has been inflated, tripled, quadrupled quickly, it's because of stealing. What we produce is more than enough for us to survive. So we really call on the armed forces, the security forces, the CNSP, really not to give in to any blackmail. The people are suffering in this country. Nigerians shouldn't be living like this. The people are coming out to support the coup leaders because they are here to bring balance to the country. The French government has condemned the coup and warned of retaliation if any of its citizens are harmed. Years of colonial and neo-colonial influence appear to have resulted in a decline in France's influence in West Africa, and some now see Russia as an alternative. China too is competing for influence, funding or lending money for large development projects. In 2017, after winning the French elections, President Emmanuel Macron said he would reset relations with Africa. The colonial past would be replaced by what he called a new vision of balanced partnership. The reorganization is not meant to be a retreat or disengagement. It will materialize through an Africanization or mutual operation of these big bases. But recent developments have challenged this approach. Last year, French troops were forced to leave Mali and Burkina Faso when their military rulers opted for a new alliance with Russia in the form of the mercenary Wagner Group. Now, with Niger's coup leaders strongly speaking out against France, it's not clear where that leaves its influence in the region or its fight against armed groups. Felix Nyawara for Inside Story. All right, let's bring in our guests for today's uh, discussion from Saint Malo in France. We're joined by Jacques Grelon, who's uh, a senior research fellow at the Global Policy Institute think tank. From Paris, we're joined by Anne Giudicelli, political and security risks consultant at Terror Risk, a consulting firm with uh, a focus on economic and strategic intelligence. And from Johannesburg, Marisa Lorenzo, an independent political and economic risk analyst. A warm welcome to you all. Jacques, let's start with you. What's gone wrong for France in Africa? President Macron wanted to transform France's relationship with its former colonies, but has had to rethink his approach after a series of humiliations. To what extent is, is this about Macron personally, not just about France? No, I don't think it's just about Macron. It's uh, probably about France, because don't forget that uh, France's increased involvement in uh, the Sahel region started in, 2000, in January 2013, when uh, uh, President Hollande responded to a call from the Malian authorities to stem 
the, the proposed the uh, action of jihadist group who were uh, going towards Bamako and stopped that. And at the time, France, France's action was welcomed by the population. François Hollande was ecstatic, said it was the best day in his life. French flags were everywhere. So France was seen there as an army of liberation. But as over the years, the security situation did not improve in, in spite of the presence of thousands of French troops in Mali. Uh, there was disenchantment in the population, and the, liber the army of liberation started to be seen an, uh, as an army of occupation. And France's presence in West Africa, was in the Sahel especially, was challenged. France also is the ex-colonial powers, or the strong anti-colonial feeling. Then it spread to uh, Burkina, uh, first Central African Republic, where the Sangaris uh, operation uh, ended in 2016. Then after that, you had Burkina Faso with uh, two coups, which led to the, uh, the departure of the French forces. And now the linchpin of the French organization in the Sahel, Niger, is actually a victim of a coup where anti-French feelings have been expressed, but it's difficult to say how strongly they are shared by the population. It seems to, we've seen some demonstrations. And once again, we sit behind the influence of Russia. Russia, and Russia is not the only country. Many countries are interested in this part of the world and want to undermine France, who has been for a long time, really, yes, it's true, the master of that region, the gendarme of Africa, uh, security, controlling governments, but it's no longer the case. France's okay. influence, economic and political, in that part of the world has mm -hmm. never been as weak. And yeah. protests against France's influence are becoming, uh, never been as strong. So, uh, okay. Uh, all right, let's let, let bring it on. Um, uh, do you agree with, with what Jacques, Jacques was saying there, that this isn't necessarily uh, about Macron and, and his personality and the way of doing things? Why is there so much anti-French sentiment in Africa today? I mean, what, what has changed? Well, you know, is it, France is one, as it has been said, it uh, is one of the, the let's say, the, the most powerful uh, partner, more historical uh, uh, partner, uh, well known by the, this area. So uh, I think that now uh, it's no more a, a question of being um, a, a former colonialist uh, power. It, it, it's finished this period. I think we enter in, into a globalization. Uh, uh, period that means that first of all uh, we have more competitors that are more aggressive that are more easy to to deal with let's say and uh, also uh, we didn't uh, adapt uh, as French or European uh, country the or even the American as they didn't adapt their approach to the continent because also we have new generation we have uh, um, uh, new needs, uh, new, uh, uh, let's say, demands uh, from partnership. And main, main point is the fact that now the, the, the population, they ask for sharing the, the wealth and the resources that they have on their own soil. So, and mainly what is always uh, said, and you can hear that at any coup or any demonstration, is the fact that uh, well, uh, the narrative is that uh, they we they fight against um, uh, um, government which is linked to a, a power, a foreign power, France or U.S., and uh, which which is uh, let's say sharing the resources and the wealth, but for the government from state to state and not toward or at the benefit of the population. So that I think that it was always somewhere in uh, in the discourse of the the the, the uh, let's say the all the protesters and all the um, uh, all the, the the opposition uh, parties. But now it's much more uh, openly said, and it's 
it's a way how okay. to say now we want something yeah. new and yeah. we want to get our resources. Uh, Marisa, on a, on a four-nation visit to Africa back in March, President Macron said the days of Franc Afrique uh, is well and truly over. France had no desire to return to past policies of interfering in, in Africa. Um, do people there believe that that is truly the case? Does it even matter um, to what extent has France and its Africa policies uh, become irrelevant on the continent? I think what we're actually looking at here is less backlash against France and more actually looking at what has happened in post-colonial Africa. And this doesn't just include the Sahel, but it includes the entire region. And really the promises that or the expectations that we had of post-colonial Africa was to have greater democratic societies, more freedom, more prosperous economies, helped by aid from the West. And that has not really happened. And of course, we've seen this take hold in the Sahel, and it's been against France because France is really one of the biggest actors there. But I don't see this as particular anti-French sentiment. I think that we can see this democratic backsliding happening in many other countries across the region because France is the biggest player there. It's the one that will get the most attention and the most focus. But for me, what is the most concerning about the events that have taken place and all of the coups that we have seen for the past three years is really that these are not actually popular uprisings. We don't actually know what these populations want. A lot of cases have actually been military coups. So what this means is that we're not actually looking for a particularly better future. We're not necessarily looking to say, OK, we don't want France, but we want someone else. We're effectively just seeing small groups of people saying that, well, we feel that we should actually be in power now, and it's our turn to take it forward. And whatever um, socioeconomic difficulties we're having, we're going to be the ones to to solve them. But the thing is, these problems are, are varied and they're great, and there's not just one act that's responsible for them. I think, of course, some of the backlash against France is warranted because we can say that from the colonial period, there were not good political systems set up and handed over. But these bad practices have effectively been entrenched yeah, by leadership yeah. in uh, post-colonial uh, Africa. I, I wanted, I wanted these problems ask, have gotten worse. Yeah. And what that means is that we're just going to see more instability. Mar Marisa, I wanted to ask you if, if French policy perhaps concentrated too much on, on helping governments and, and not people them, uh, people, uh, some of them dictatorships. I mean, does that explain at least the public resentment towards France? Potentially, but I think that if you kind of look at post-colonial discourse in Africa, it has really focused on, on what happened in the colonial period and what colonial actors did. It focuses less on what leaders in the post-colonies have done. Um, and certainly these leaders have entrenched these bad practices, but we can also argue that it's not necessarily France that has just supported some less democratic regimes, but also Africa has been the recipient of a lot of aid, and this, you could also argue, has effectively helped some of these leaders to stay in place and taken the responsibility and the burden off them of developing their own countries and not really held them to account. So, you know, it's a very, it's a very complex argument, but I think it's one that is definitely worth having. Uh, Jacques, to what extent has France become the scapegoat uh, for many of uh, Africa's problems? Yeah, I think that's the right word. France has become, is the scapegoat for all security, social, economic problems in that part of the world. France had claimed that it would bring back uh, peace in Mali, but uh, was not able to. It's very difficult. We see the jihad, the jihadist threat is spreading all over the region, and France was meant to act as a bulwark against it in and especially in the case of, uh, of uh, Niger, which had become, after the fall of Burkina Faso and uh, Mali, where France had lots of forces, France was uh, there cooperating with the national uh, army of Niger, it was not leading the operation, it was there as a backup, but still, it's still seen because it's France, because of uh, our past history, our wrongdoings during the uh, period of Africa, during the period of France-Afrique, obviously is the ideal uh, scapegoat for all the social and economic problems of that region. And it's quite easy for uh, military who want to overthrow a government. And we see that in Chad, 
it's not, it was not popular demand for the departure of France. This coup was the result of inter internal feud. It's uh, uh, General Chani, who had been head of the presidential guard uh, under the previous president, Mamadou Issoufou, from since 2011, and stayed as head of the presidential guard uh, under Mohamed uh, Salou, uh, Bazoum. And therefore, he, he apparently, from what I hear, he feared of being dismissed and, as a result, decided to stage a coup. And at first was touch and go, and then it was joined in all this, uh, in, in this coup attempt by all the commanders of the armed forces of, uh, of, of Niger, who think or who bring the message that civilian governments, democratic governments backed by the West are impotent in dealing with the security and economic uh, situation in the country, and it's better to go back to the old system of military rule, of strong leaders there, appealing to the patriotic feeling, which are fermented, which also have been, let's not okay. forget the anti-French feelings in the region, have yeah. been fanned by uh, Russia, the Wagner Group, the propaganda yeah. campaign. I, and uh, But I don't think that in the case of Niger, uh, Russia was behind the moves. I think mm. it's more a domestic problem. And maybe okay. Russia is might be hoping to capitalize. But it's interesting to see that they have adopted a fairly cool approach to the world, asking for the restoration of democracy, not for the restoration of President Bazoum, but they're playing it soft at okay, the moment, I, waiting to see yeah. how things are developed. Jack, I, I, don't, I don't want to get too bogged down in, in what's going on in, in Niger uh, right now. I want to, ah, look, okay. I want to look up, uh, up more at, at French policy, if you like. Um, Anne, um, yeah. what are the risks to France itself internally of instability in these, these countries, some of them former colonies allied to Islamic militant groups? Well, you know, first of all, I think the, the, the main, uh, main issue, uh, the, the main consequences is, uh, first of all, what, what will be the, the decided option? Because, as you know, um, uh, the ECOWAS decided, uh, threatened to to use force and, uh, and speci specifically uh, sanctions. And we know that uh, imposing sanctions will, first of all, uh, be, uh, uh, have a big impact on the humanitarian and the, the human uh, and social and economical um, uh, impacts on the population. So uh, uh, first of all, let's say it will be something like that. Secondly, of course, uh, if uh, the, it's depending on the negotiation for me, I, I guess that at the beginning, in the, the how to deal with uh, such situation is first of all to 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 raise the voice and to 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 have a radical point of view to defend the position for each of the the stakeholder, let's say, and uh, then to open to lead uh, to leave negotiations. Uh, go through all these things and uh, finally that help uh, negotiation and compromise. Okay. Uh, uh, so I hope that this uh, week we will we'll serve that. And what uh -huh. notice, what notice um, uh, has uh, what's happening in these former colonies, uh, have young people in France been taking about, about, about what's going on there? Of course. You know, it's the same phenomena that we had during the the um, uh, Arab Spring, you know, you remember in the 2011, uh, it was exactly the same situation in a way that uh, the enemy was much more the the United States, and uh, you had you had we had the same situation. One country, second, so or the neighbourhood countries, they were uh, impacted by such uh, revolution as it it has been uh, uh, called. And uh, and then, of course, in Europe, you have a, a big uh, echo of that, and uh, some young people, but not only young, uh, can uh, identify with such situation, and uh, maybe not by uh, trying to raise the Russian flag, but much more on condemning um, uh, let's say the, the the not the colonialism, but uh, the the 
the capitalist way of dealing uh, and the way how the population okay. has been uh, uh, impacted by uh, such a policy. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, Marisa, I'll come to you in just a moment. But first, Jacques, do you, do you want to come back on, on, on what you just heard? And I, I, I saw you, you, you wanting to interject there. Yeah, you wanted to talk about the international, the internal impact of this on France. The justification for France intervening even uh, in a strong manner in Mali, especially in Burkina Faso, against jihadist group was, at the time, the fear of terrorism, Islamist terrorism. Of, at, uh, for, we've had, France has been a, a victim of Isla, Islamist terrorism on its territory, but you know, Bataclan, Nice, and all that. But it's, I don't think the jihadist movement in uh, Africa have never been involved in actions on the French soil. And all the actions on the French soil has been the result of actions piloted by Al-Qaeda or Daesh. But the reason why France is still, well, still wants to intervene against Jihadist group is in order to protect the countries of the Gulf of Guinea, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, all these countries fear that the jihadists spreading from, jihadism spreading from the north to the south could destabilize this region. So the Sahel was the rampart against further destabilization of uh, the countries of the Gulf of Guinea. But now, that's the, the importance of Niger, that the West and the countries of okay. the Gulf of Guinea, which are generally pro-West, uh, could face if suddenly Niger fell and okay. jihadists took right. advantage of the situation, okay. Okay. the bad situation, which would announce for uh, arising from this coup. OK, Marisa, um, time is against us. I want to get two more questions in here. Uh, firstly, is Africa making a mistake by turning away from France in favour of other partners? You've got Russia with its Wagner mercenaries, accusations of human rights abuses by them, Russia's disinformation campaigns in the digital uh, sphere, China, which gets involved in uh, Africa, often, though, at great cost. Surely the French are more benign and reliable partners. Why doesn't Africa see it that way? I've said this before, and I will definitely say it again, which is that I don't think it's up to us to say that, you know, France is better or worse for Africa. Only African countries can decide the future that they want to have. But there's one thing that I really wanted to point it out from what the other two speakers have said today, which is that, um, you know, what does France really have to lose in this situation? And I think one thing that has been missing from this conversation so far is that some of the biggest companies in the world, like your oil and gas majors, engineering firms, they're French. And France, you know, needs to have good relations across the entire world, including in Africa, to also protect its economic interests. Because these companies, of course, with their major infrastructure projects, for example, they do support the French economy a lot. So this is really one of the big motivations that France has, and this is why it wants to keep its influence there. And of course, it doesn't want that influence to go to other nationalities or, you know, to other countries, because then, effectively, they can get their own companies in there. And I think that that's something that we also do have to consider. France is one of the biggest economies in the world. It wants to sustain that. It doesn't want any diminishing influence, especially in Africa, which is becoming a battleground. And it's becoming a battleground in two ways. The first yeah, okay. is that it's not your, you know, bipolar world where, in the Cold War, you had to choose the Soviets or the Americans but insecurity is also increasing in the region. So there's a lot going on, right. but France doesn't want to lose its influence in the middle okay. of that. And the main but reason is economic. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. We've got about three minutes left, so I, I, I need uh, brief answers from, from you all here. The same question to, to all of you, about a minute each, please. Um, what should France's Africa policy look like? Uh, what role can it, should it be playing on the continent that would be acceptable to... Uh, the continent's leaders and its people. Jacques, let's start with you. The role that France must play is to be uh, to back up uh, reliable partners, reliable governments, uh, and. Uh, as I would like to say that the economic interests of France have been declining. We see loads of French companies, French entrepreneurs are now leaving Africa, like the Bolloré Group, for example. So uh, there's an awareness that uh, 
Africa is now a treasure chest. Everyone wants to uh, to be active in there, from uh, Turkey, China, all the Arab Arab countries. There's so many minerals and so on. So, what can France do? Can it hope is to be able to collaborate with some uh, governments, hopefully okay. democratic, but it's not the case. And mm -hmm. France mostly is trying to preserve the, the more important countries for the French okay. economy, is the countries bordering uh, the Gulf of Guinea, as I said. And what should future French, French policy in Africa look like? Well, I think that, um, first of all, I think that France has to to be a normal, to be normalized as a partner, not a specific and special partner, first of all. That means not only for for France, but also for the African. So that has to, they have to deal together as a partner that can be, do business with some and some others. That means also that uh, the, the let's say the the countries the 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 states in Africa they have to defend a bit more their their own resources. For instance, in Niger, uh, the mining code uh, hasn't been reformed since many many years, mm. and it's not at the benefit of the states. So uh, I think that what the population, among many things, I I, I guess. Uh, asks for uh, um, a, a new kind of partnership that that uh, that be able to to uh, share, as I said, the resources and and for the country and the population to benefit from those partnerships. So I think this approach has to be done, as you know, France is dealing with Germany or uh, and so on, and okay. Africa with uh, Turkey or I don't know what. So the change have, have, have to be done on both sides. OK. Uh, Marisa, then, what role should Africa, uh, should rather France be playing in Africa that would be acceptable to the continent's leaders and its people? So when Macron did conduct his visit to four African countries earlier this year, he went to Gabon, Angola, the Republic of Congo and the Democratic Republic of Congo, he was fairly well received there and that was at the time that he promised that France would take a step back from you know policy making and politics in African countries but that instead it, it would provide or commit military training start up military academies in Africa and that seemed to be an acceptable step back but piece of involvement for African countries so I think that if Macron would stay true to his word in that regard I think that that would be relatively well received going forward. OK, there we must end it. Many thanks indeed, Jacques Relon, Anne Giudicelli and uh, Marissa Lorenzo uh, for being part uh, of today's programme. Uh, and thank you for watching. You can see the programme again at any time by going to the website at aljazeera.com. Uh, for further discussion, join us at our Facebook page. You'll find that at facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And, of course, you can join the conversation on Twitter, our handle at AJ Inside Story. From me, Adrian Finnegan, and the team here in Doha, thanks for watching. We'll see you again. Bye for now.